Hello, my name is Daniel Kostetner, and I'm the president of Arizona State University's Air Devils AIAA Design Build Fly Team. Our aircraft is the Duct Tape Overcast. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank Professor Takahashi for his guidance and expertise, and the rest of my team for all the hard work that they put into the aircraft. This plane wouldn't have flown without you guys. For the 2021 DPF competition, Air Devil's mission was to design, build, and fly an RC aircraft capable of deploying, towing, and retracting a sensor. The aircraft was built for three flight missions and a ground mission. Mission 1 is to fly the plane. Mission 2 is to carry a large payload of multiple box sensors to complete three quick laps. And Mission 3 is to tow the sensor through the sky, completing as many laps as possible in 10 minutes. Some of the trade studies we performed in the preliminary design stage focused on what shape the final aircraft would be. We decided upon a low aspect ratio, high wing design with a conventional tail and a bomb bay to ensure that the deployment and retrieval of the sensor were as smooth as possible. We also conducted a detailed paper study on what combination of sensor length and sensor quantity would achieve the greatest score. Taking into consideration weight growth and mission performance, including takeoff capability, lap time, and power consumption, before ultimately deciding upon the design point of carrying eight 10 inch sensors. Now we'll move on to a discussion of our aircraft. Here are the performance specs for each of the missions. The low aspect ratio wing and high thrust motors ensure that the aircraft has the performance to lift the full 20 pound all up weight before running out of runway. To meet our design point, the aircraft has a large internal volume to fit many sensor boxes and a high mounted conventional tail to prevent any catastrophic impact with an errant sensor. The duct tape overcast is 68 and a half inches stem to stern, 28 inches from the ground to the tip of the vertical tail, and has a 60 inch wingspan with a fuselage width of eight and a half. It's built like a steakhouse, but handles like a bistro with a split carbon fiber keel, laser cut wind structure, and 3D printed joints. For mission two, we have eight total payloads, two aft of the wing, four below, and two ahead of the wing, with a winch mechanism that is flipped over for use in mission three. Here is our propulsion configuration. This was our first year using low KV motors in combination with high voltage batteries. They work together to give us a combined takeoff thrust of 14 pounds while having the endurance for the full 10 minutes on mission three. Our control system utilized two transmitters and two receivers, one set to control the aircraft and the other to control the mission systems. Flying an RC plane is hard enough without having to be on the clock, and the two transmitter solution prevents the pilot from being task saturated. Our flight sciences team designed a fantastic wing for the plane. It has a varied camber throughout the span starting inboard with an inverted NACA 220 before flipping to a standard 220 a few inches out. The camber smooths into a NACA 210 at the motor mount before finally a NACA 230 at the tip. The inverted camber ensures that the wing root stalls first, ensuring a mushy loss of list stall instead of, oh god, I can't roll stall. The red X's in the bottom right chart represents where flow separates as the angle of attack increases based on the Stratford criteria. Here are some more diagrams of our major components. Our manufacturing process relied on laser cut balsa, bass, and plywood for most of the structure. 3D printed joints were used in several places, as well as the front nose cone and end cap of our fuselage. We also laser cut production tooling out of wood to ensure the proper alignment of our torque box to the ribs while our fuselage was self-aligning. A retrieval system used a geared brushed electric motor to ensure that the sensor is capable of being retracted under all flight conditions. It takes 20 seconds to fully deploy or retract the sensor, meeting the Mission 3 requirement of deploying before the first turn. And the focus of this year's competition, the sensor. It has a frustrum with a hollow base to maximize the drag at the rear of the sensor for stability and is entirely 3D printed. It's 10 inches long, weighs three quarters of a pound, and took 24 hours to print all the components. It uses a 10 foot braided aux cable to carry the signal from the aircraft mounted receiver to the light on the sensor. And now for the part you've all been waiting for, the flight demonstration. But first, the technical inspection. Here's a walk around of the finished aircraft. You can see the low aspect ratio wing dominating most of the fuselage. High mounted tail to avoid strikes with the sensor. Three D printed end cap, nose cap, two doors on the top that flip up for uh, ease of access in the ground mission. Here you can see the varied camber across the span of the wing. Custom landing gear, 3D printed tail joint. Bolts hold everything together. Large propellers. And that's our aircraft. And now for a test of the sensor functionality. And here you can see the Bombay doors open. The sensor deploys from the Bombay. 
the lights activate, blink. And finally, the sensor retracts before the bomb bay doors close. And now you can see the duct tape overcast leap into the sky. Now a landing by our test pilot and RC extraordinaire, Evan Draganchuk. Yeah, it's good. Last but not least, here is our in-flight sensor deployment, steady flight, and retraction. Beautiful, look at that. 